<sighs> oh my God, it's our old friend, Len Kabazinski. Oh, hi, Jay. Who put that there? Well, welcome back to Best of the Worst, Len. Uh, Len, of course, is the director of such films as Swamp Zombies, Curse of the Wolf, and Fist of the Vampire. Also, Jay, my latest film, Angel of Reckoning. Where can people get it? iTunes, Amazon, uh, through the Voodoo uh, Video On Demand service, and any place better DVDs and movies are sold. Do you just always have that with you? Um, guess. Well, here's a film that I always have with me. It's our first film of the night. It's called Bigfoot versus D.B. Cooper. Who? We're gonna go off the assumption that people don't know who he is. This is D.B. Cooper, uh, and he fights Bigfoot. This is a David Dakota film, which means if you flip over the back, it's the exact same picture, just with a bunch of shirtless dudes. Well, Bigfoot versus D.B. Cooper, starring Eric Roberts and Linnea Quigley. Len, why don't you read the back of the box and tell us about this film? My pleasure, Jay. <clears throat> First it says, exhilarating, entertaining, and fun, says Awesome Magazine. Rachel, a female war veteran, returns home only to launch her own personal vendetta against the criminal underworld when a family member dies mysteriously. The underworld kingpin rules with an iron fist, and those who are below her are terrified when her name is even mentioned. Wait, Len, are you reading the back of Angel of Reckoning? Anyways, Rachel takes on the identity of Angel, a go-go dancer at a popular nightclub. As Angel learns the details about the organization, she begins to be... De 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 Bigfoot vs. D.B. Cooper stars Eric Roberts and Linnea Quigley. And as we can see, now the truth can be told. But have we found Bigfoot? What truth? We haven't found Bigfoot or D.B. Cooper. Would there be to any of Anyways. When several young hunters arrive at a secluded lodge in the Pacific Northwest, little do they know they will become the hunted. I had to deal with some problems of my own. Who's talking? Eric that Roberts guy. is supposed to be who? I think this they, guy, Eric this guy? Roberts is supposed to be this guy in the yeah. future. He's recalling back. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought this house was vacant. We rented it for the holiday. We? In order to get closer to the inner sanctum, Rachel takes on the identity of Angel, a go-go dancer, at a popular nightclub. As Angel learns details about the organization, she begins to exact her revenge against anyone she deems responsible for her family member's death. However, any time to be slowly, please try. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What is it now? Johnny? What the hell is going on around here? Well, Len, I was not expecting to see that many shirtless dudes in a David Dakota film. Boy, oh boy. Literally. Oh. Who put that there? This is much better. Now I feel horribly inferior. Well, Mike, let's clear those images from our mind. Got it? Mm-hmm. What's up next? Shirtless dudes. A, a what? How about this? Black Cougar. It's got a website. Why don't you tell us about it, Mike? Oh, yes. Um, I'm very excited about Black Cougar TM. I trademarked it. It's trademarked. Uh, this movie is a total mystery, even though there is a website. Uh, and, and it's still up. 
believe it or not. It's, what would that website be, Mike? It's printed right here on the back of the box. It's www.blackcougar.com. Um, and so it basically has all the information about the film. There's some stills, there's a bunch of uh, text, uh, the synopsis, there's even a trailer. So, you know, maybe uh, uh, if you want to know more about Black Cougar, check out blackcougar.com. But let's talk about the film. Let's start with the top. Finally, all children will be safe. From... And, and all children will never be safe. From Black Cougar. Black Cougar or no Black Cougar. It's really a very blanketed statement. And then it says a superhero made for children. So this text is very worrisome. It's very clunky and very strange. Also, it's, it's oddly centered. And then the title's down here. There's a whole lot of weird shit going on here. And there is no pictures of the film on the back. There's the website. There is a website, which you should check out, www.blackcougar.com. There's a picture of New York City, but it's not actually New York City. It's actually Las Vegas. It's the New York, New York Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. So I don't know if whoever made this is, is mentally challenged or strange. So what you're saying is it's set in Las Vegas. Um, uh, it's possible it's set at the New York, New York Casino in Las Vegas. While the city sleeps, Black Cougar protects. So we've established that now. The yeah. superhero that's protecting children from something bad is Black Cougar. Well, it doesn't quite say what he's protecting. It just says he protects. Um, all uh, children will be all safe. All children will be safe. That I may be an unrelated I sentence. I got it. Um, I got it. Silvio, local teenager. This isn't an American film. No. Uh, befriends neighborhood children, period. When he prevents a tragedy from occurring, I don't he, like where this is going at all. he finds himself confused when questioned. We're confused now. Yeah. He confronts his father only to be pacified. Oh my God, this is so Asian. When a plague of kidnappings hits the neighborhood, it is Silvio who's accused. Now it's the father's time to tell Silvio the secret. They come together to find out who's involved. That's a sentence. What is happening? I don't know. What they find out is a little more than what they bargained for. Father and son now come together to take on evil. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, uh, there's no mention of Black Cougar whatsoever. <laughs> it's script. Silvio. Silvio and his father are doing something. So his father or Silvio could be the Black Cougar. Oh my God, the, the director is named Silvio. <laughs> this is getting worse. So, we have established what exactly? Uh, there's a lot of kids in danger in Las Vegas casinos. Well, it's time to find out what Black Cougar is all about. And don't forget to check out that website, www.blackcougar.com, for Black more Cougar. information about the film. Dot com. That was unexpected. Hey, Len! What's our next uh, movie? Our next movie is Raw Force. Oh. Raw Force! Yes! The Shuriken, the ninja star. I'm gonna read this for you, because this so I am very excited to watch this again. Okay. Welcome to Warrior Island, burial ground of disgraced martial arts masters. I think that's really all I need to read, but um, we, I'll, yeah, I'll continue. An island full of martial arts masters who are also bad guys. They're also disgraced. Oh, that bad... When the Burbank Kung Fu Club... Yep. That's right. <laughs> the yep. Burbank Kung Fu Club. Yeah, Burbank's known for, you know, a couple things. Disgraced martial arts masters? And great crepes. What are crepes? Uh, they're, they're like, uh, they're like thin, very thin pancakes. I'm going to continue here. When the Burbank Kung Fu Club travels to the mysterious island, we establish that's Warrior's Island, they quickly find themselves facing the bloodthirsty vengeance of flesh-ripping kung fu fighting zombies. Yes! <laughs> This movie's fun. It's, 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 it's yeah. 
Cameron Mitchell still has not hit anything. <laughs> and no. he's fired a lot in this movie. And they just gave him enough. Ah! Someone ah! take the gun from Cameron Mitchell. Are you telling me we're going to have kung fu and zombies? Mm hmm. This sounds like an awesome movie. It's. Wait. Gun toting while slave traders. That's right. And a band of strange monks. Okay. Who may be the only key to explaining the madness. I love it. That have you followed the madness? There's monks, there's guns, there's zombies, there's kung fu, and there's Burbank. I'm with you. The Burbank Kung Fu Club. Of course. Wait for just wait, wait yeah, for that wait, kick wait, to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Edward Murphy's raw force is a virtual smorgasbord of over-the-top sleaze, mixing zombies, cannibals, outrageous action, mm -hmm. gore, mm -hmm. copious amounts of nudity, shit dog, starring exploitation greats Cameron Mitchell and Vic <gasps> Diaz. We're gonna put two up for that and Kung Fu. Boom. Pow. <laughs> Well, Len, cannibals, zombies, guns, action, boobs, Cameron Mitchell. Mm -hmm. This is like the greatest movie ever made. We're about to find out. Let's go watch it. Oh. What the? Where's my crate? Oh, okay. That wrapped that up real nicely. There. Bazooka! Oh my God, ah! It was Hitler with a bazooka and he hit a palm tree in the graveyard. Oh! oh. Take the sword! Hitler? Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when the, when the chair size goes up, the entertainment factor goes right. down. You know? Well, everybody, uh, our friend Len Kabzinski is back on Best of the Worst. And, and in celebration of enjoying three wonderful films, we are going to, uh, well, you put that down. Oh, We're going to have a, a shot of sake. Say um, goodbye to your eyesight, everyone. And Rich, Rich, since he had a little problem with alcohol before that <laughs> resulted in some unintentional deaths, uh, Rich doesn't drink alcohol, but Jack, Len, and I Mr. will. Boots. Cheers! Ninja Saki. I'm spilling five-hour energy all over the Ninja place. Mr. This is awful. Oh, my God. Oh, that tastes horrible. <laughs> Whew, that is poopy. <laughs> <laughs> that is Ninja Saki. Oh, that does not come into the night silently. Whew. Oh. Rich, Rich blew his load all over Bigfoot versus D.B. Cooper, <laughs> and boy, oh boy, is that ironic. Rich, tell us all about D.B. Cooper versus Bigfoot. Well, well, a little bit about the background first. Uh, people, a lot of people might not know who D.B. Cooper is. Yeah, yeah, D.B. Cooper I didn't, I didn't know is, is a legend. It, it's, the, it's the legend of D.B. Cooper. It's my favorite real-life unsolved mystery. In 1971, man, you know, wearing sunglasses and a nice suit with a briefcase, uh, took a seat on an American Airlines flight, hands a stewardess's note. Note says, uh, I have a bomb. And he demands that American Airlines give him $200,000, which is a lot in 1971 money, or he will blow up the plane and everyone aboard. They give in to his demands, so they, they land the plane. Uh, they give him the money he asked for, along with three parachutes and he lets everyone off the plane except for the two pilots and the stewardess then they take the plane back up and they're flying somewhere over the uh, american uh, northwest and you know so you know he puts on one of the parachutes takes the money and at just some point over the northwest he jumped out of the airplane never to be seen again and then and then cleverly here's here's the premise like this is what happened to, to db cooper he he ran into bigfoot Excellent premise for a film. Yeah. They don't do anything with that. It is, it is literally 
78 minutes, because they couldn't make it to 90, of shirtless dudes uh, walking around the woods, uh, jogging around the woods, uh, taking off their pants, yeah. putting their pants back on. They do that, they do that. And then like hiking around with these comically tiny hunting guns. That's how they hiked. Yeah. They, they're yeah. gonna hunt they, turkeys. They, they hiked around. Oh, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this amazing, Rich? It's amazing how how blatant and lazy it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah lazy is a good word for it. <sighs> They're still running. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> oh, there's oh, a, no, horse. a horse. It's a horse. Eventually, they have to not be running. Uh, Eventually, yeah. we'll get to that point. You think? Yeah. I can't believe how long this this is. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a stopwatch? <laughs> can, and just a little corner at the bottom of the screen, just for the entire runtime of our episode. Yeah. Can we just have all of the, the, the guys running shots? <laughs> just keep it playing yeah, in real time. Just keep it playing in real time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just cut, cut them all together. Yeah. It's a literal runtime. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. That is awesome. Mike wins. Mike wins. Mike wins. Mike wins. Mike wins. Mike wins. You did it. Rich, you're totally right. Bigfoot versus DB Cooper. Such an amazing premise. But we should mention this is a film by David Dakota, uh, AKA Richard Chasen. Uh, Dick, Dick Chasen. Um, we did The Killer oh, Eye, I another one it. of his films. Yes. Dick Chasen. And, Chasing, I and his, his, the thing he likes, as you'll see, by all the numerous titles that are available from him, uh, which we'll show in a graphic here. Uh, he likes uh, shirtless men. Um, well, the, the, the two uh, top billed actors in the film, Eric Roberts and Lene Quigley, uh, are not, well. They're, they're, they don't physically appear in the film. They, no. they appear in the film only in voiceover. If, if you could quickly cut to Linnea Quigley's uh, appearance in the film. Thank you, sir. I'll read it later. They don't show Linnea Quigley in the film. She has one line off camera as a stewardess. Well, that's not her as the stewardess, obviously. She's never there on set, probably. It's Top neither built. is uh, Eric. No, well, neither is Eric, yeah. right? I hadn't expected anyone else being up here, but they seem like a good bunch of guys, so I was happy to play along. Eric Roberts, had, you know, like uh, Daniel Stern got a, a top build credit in the Wonder Years because he was, you know, a main voice part of that. She has one voiceover line and is top build. Amazing, yeah. This is a scam. Well, while we were watching the film, that's one of the things we were discussing is is the purpose of it. And Len, you felt yeah. very betrayed by it. Yeah, but... I did because, as Rich was saying, this is an awesome idea. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome to have two legends in the woods. They're going to meet and do all this. It, dude, it's, it could be. It could have been awesome. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's borderline porn because the only touching that goes on, the only erotic touching that goes on, is Bigfoot caressing a buff dude's abs. <laughs> <laughs> Like we can't, you can't say enough how much this is not a movie. Like, we've yeah, watched it's not. It's a not ton a of terrible movies here. This doesn't come close to anything. It's montage after montage of shirtless guys walking or jogging. That's mm. the first forty minutes. There's three. There's there's several major segments. The first one is guy walking. Yeah. The next one, which we found shocking, was one guy walks up the staircase, goes into oh, a room, right. removes his pants. And, and like play acts with a gun in the mirror. Get him. Right there, right there. Well, that's... Like, and, and it goes on for like 15 minutes. They, they have rented the house uh, to all spend Thanksgiving with each other, shirtless, doing turkey hunts. Instead of spending Thanksgiving with their families. <laughs> Perfectly normal. Yeah, Perfectly but normal. The, the, the next, the, I would say a good entire third of the movie in the middle is one guy after the other coming up the staircase, individually going to a different room in the house, mm -hmm. removing their pants, 
and standing in front of the mirror with a gun. Here it is. All right. Here it is. Moment of truth. Come on, be done. Be done, be done, be done. Rule of threes, rule of threes, rule of threes. Rules apply in our real world. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> this one can't even take his shirt off. It's already gone. Uh, but the shit. pants are coming pants. off. It's about the, the pants. pants. <laughs> Come on! Is this his own personal like thing, or is he selling it to an audience that has a thing for what he likes? Do you know what I mean? I don't think he's trying to trick like like B movie horror fans like us that are gonna go watch this. But the ones but that don't know any better would rent it. It's a, it's that's unfortunate. Not, yeah. He's yeah, that's definitely not trying fair. to trick I mean, people. You think so? Absolutely. The ad on the back here with all of the posters of shirtless dudes. Uh, look at the website here, rapidheart.com. This is this is some kind of thing. I, I swear to God, I, I have a feeling that David Dakota just met five dudes at a at a gay bar, right. and they just hang out hung out that weekend. Well, two of them had to be like they personal friends because they weren't ripped or anything. You had the two. The one man had <laughs> jaundice and needed like a liver transplant. That's, but, jaundice. See, <laughs> jaundice. And that's the that's where it, like the premise kind of breaks down because like. Some of the dudes weren't that great to look at, and they didn't show anything. Yeah, but his friends were hot, and he had to just put up with the uglier men. Right, put up with the two that weren't. Like, or, else, oh, right, or, else the, or else the super ripped guys wouldn't right, come along. Right, right. Sure. That is, is theory number two. Theory number one is that is, this is a finely crafted <laughs> fetish film. <laughs> finely crafted. Okay. That's theory number one. Okay. Theory number two is, is David Dakota is a sex pervert and he's okay. tricking these young men into being in a movie and then and then when he Mr. Boo Mr. B double O Z Here's the movie you're going to be a makes star me way more sense. And it's too blatant for that nobody yeah. would be that dumb What kind of animal would do that I don't know a bear I didn't come out here to hunt bears Neither did I Maybe we should go back to the lodge Yeah good idea let's go the laziness of the filmmaking needs to be pointed out and, and stressed. The, the shots of D.B. Cooper on the plane were just him against a white wall. Yeah, he was in an office or something yeah. somewhere. And... The, the, who somebody, I don't know if it was David Dakota himself, actually took a plane ride and kind of quickly filmed with their camera. Yeah. And then, and then used oh, that. Yeah, yeah. That, I th that kind of shit, the, the modern day in 1971, like the guys are running in like clearly right, modern right, tennis clearly. shoes. And Shoot. that is the least of the problems here. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Oh my God. Oh shit. The blades aren't moving. And then <laughs> the blades aren't moving. <laughs> what is this shot? I'm not point out mistakes oh, film guy, oh, but yeah. Well, well, is that was a cargo plate? I, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I don't. The, the, the real big question is, is purpose and, and audience. Like, is, is it David Dakota himself who's just having a fun weekend with some dudes? Yeah. Right, to him I'm sure it was a blast. Then, then why even release a movie? Just pay some dudes to come over and hang out at your house. Yeah. Why make a movie and why sell it? Why unless... package it? Why print it? Because why... you can make a minor amount of money while hanging out with some dudes in your house. Turn around, Bigfoot's one. Yeah. D.B. Cooper plot is one. Yeah. His, his Vietnam buddy slash um, uh, co-conspirator yeah. is, is, is a plot point in itself. Five guys staying at the house is one, okay. and the existence of Bigfoot is the other. Yeah. Other than that, okay. there's no other like meat to the movie. No. Right. No pun so intended. That was four. I didn't really. I <laughs> oh. Was, was oh, there's plenty of meat to the know. movie. Plenty because, of because beefcake. Yeah, dog. What? Man, man Fuck meat. off. Man meat. Well, I'm out, so. <laughs> you want to run for it? Yeah, okay. Only give me the rifle. Come hey, come on, you know I'm the better shot. Come on. Is that the guy who voices, uh, Just like back in then, huh? Frank West in Dead Rising? I'm going to say no. I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'm going to say no.
barely there. There's nothing that happens in the whole movie. Right. Up until the very end, when we finally get to see D.B. Cooper versus Bigfoot. Yes. Oh, ah, yeah. look at it. This is shot with the two of them together. What? I missed it. I was looking down at my phone. D.B. Cooper is oh, no, fights him. We're getting what we, we were promised on the box. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Imagine if that tiny bit of whatever you want to call it, energy, whatever, of that moment yes. would have been even sprinkled throughout the rest of the film. Fuck the, the 20 minutes of walking and jogging and stuff. You you had 10 seconds there that were really entertaining in, a, yeah. in the way that this movie could be, I guess. And yeah, yeah, fuck that movie, dude. Not my money, you big hairy son of a bitch! Well, that was the worst film I've ever seen. You always say that? I think it's finally true. Yeah. I think yeah. This, is, this is the worst film we have ever done. Ever. Because it's, it's barely a film. It's arguable if it actually is a film. For, for once, this is not Mike Stoklasa hyperbole. This is the worst, worst thing film we have seen. ever watched. This, this is the first time I have ever sat down with some dudes and watched a gay porno and <laughs> it was it was very uncomfortable. Wait, wasn't there that time that the guy invited you into his bedroom to show you his Wendy's ad? Where's the beef? <laughs> and he said, show me the beef. I hate you so much. Remember? And he closed the door he behind you. you I, I hate you figure. so much. His Warhammer figure, his singular. Yeah. Somebody somewhere at that end had the idea to turn DB into big no. and um, no, yeah. We, yeah, I don't think we could say much more about DB Cooper. That was a fine. That was a fine discussion about a gay porno. Great, yeah. we'll cross that off my bucket list. <laughs> DB Cooper does not deserve to be on this fucking table. No, <laughs> no. the amount of trash that is sat on this table. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. D.B. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper and that movie do not deserve to be on this table. <laughs> kind of a nut punch, but okay. All right. All right. Yeah. You want to have a beer with us? Yeah, I'll take a beer. Now, let's continue. Let's continue. Our next film as one of the worst films I've ever seen. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, no, we just talked about D.B. Cooper uh, versus Bigfoot. Black Cougar. Jack. Hold, hold on, I gotta interrupt for one second, please. I'm talking to you too, um, Jay. Yeah. Black Cougar has a theme song. We're all friends. Give it to me straight. Is it better than Curse no, of the Wolf? No, 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 no. Don't, we, don't. We were so don't. hyped because your fans for are Curse gonna think you're kissing my butt about no. something. We were, we no, were give it to me straight. Extremely hyped about Curse of the Wolf. Before we met you, we did that episode and we talked about Curse of the Wolf. We talked about that theme song that is in my head forever. Curse of the Wolf. So Black Cougar, because I think Black Cougar is awesome. It is. It's not better than Curse of the Wolf. No. I'll say this. Okay. I can I can hear the Curse of the Wolf theme in my head. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the the Black Cougar okay. theme, yeah. and I Fair just enough. watched it. You see, you do have feelings, and you do have a heart. This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Oh, he's wiping away his non-existent <laughs> tears. It's tear. not right. It was a close-up. I will. I would love to tell you about Black Cougar. This is uh, the greatest movie that the New Jersey Neighborhood Association has ever produced. It is the story of a young boy who uh, befriends even younger children, uh, but the younger children have a tendency to get kidnapped. So the young boy, who as it turns out is an android, decides well, his, his father actually decides that the young boy who's actually an android is going to become a superhero uh, called the Black Cougar to save the, the lost children. But really not to save the lost children because he was actually, uh, he was implicated in kidnapping the lost children. So it was really just to cover up his face. I know he's the one that took my son. Get him out. He's the one. Get him out of here. Back off. 
Uh, he said so he's gonna fight them with toys. I think that's awesome. Is, the, is this supposed to be like the air duct? Yeah. 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 Oh, Jesus. No! Ah! <laughs> only the, the lights and the eyes only work in some this of them. This is so cute. This that's is great. great. That's this awesome. So I think it's awesome. That's so awesome. <laughs> this, got no this looks like the thriller video. But the, the, point, the point is, the point is, in early 2000, comic book movies were becoming a thing. Yes. And then the De Silvio family hey, everybody. In, in New Jersey decided, we're getting a piece of that action. Cash in on this craze. <laughs> we have no right to it. <laughs> we're getting a piece of that action. Which was suspiciously similar to Black Panther, but I don't, I'm going to guess they have no idea that that character exists. No. Only, probably, probably only, not. only in like the name and look of the superhero. Like just the name and the look. Oh! <laughs> oh! oh. 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 Awesome. <laughs> so New York. Uh, uh, you, yeah. Uh. <sighs> oh. Oh. Parkour! <laughs> oh no! They, they can't get over the fence. <laughs> I was very excited to watch this. Yeah. And I was more excited while watching it because it lived up to every dream that I had of watching some idiot from <laughs> New Jersey fail. Well, you were scared that it was gonna be a foreign film. You were scared yeah, at it, first because of the wacky verbiage and stuff on it. It's um... yes, yes. It's it's written like a translation from right, Chinese from to right. English, yeah. but it, it's just someone from New Jersey. And, and the back, it, it that's uh, <laughs> what is that? Before I even got the blood off my hands, the nurse came running in. She said it'd been a terrible car crash and that my wife and my child had been killed. He created an android because his wife and child were killed in a car accident. It's like Geppetto built Eminem. Wait. This movie is like 8 Mile meets Toys. We talk about Black Cougar being created by this old, his grandpa or whatever in his laboratory that's like through the cartoon of Spider-Man and his amazing friends where they flip the switch and all the stuff flips around and stuff like that. Oh. If you follow me. <laughs> No one saw that coming. No. no. This is a secret. Wait, map. where's the passage? It's gonna be the He moves the walls. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh, they're going to see Space Cop! Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, oh my god. That is fucking awesome. Yes! Dude. That's, That's exactly. awesome. Welcome to my secret stainless steel kitchen. Right? 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 Is it not right, though? I believe it is. I, I can barely remember that shit. He had a trophy or something, I think, in the cartoon, and he twists the trophy or turns it or something. And it... But he, So he creates this android M&M, but before, he tells a little bit of a backstory. He was like an intern somewhere, and he had to operate. He wanted to be a heart surgeon and a brain surgeon. That's right. I don't... That was his motivation to want a kid because his wife and kid died. Oh, okay, and, I got it. Yeah, that his, makes sense. And his makes surgery sense. background mixed with his toy making knowledge he was clearly allowed not him to be somehow a build an android. It, it, if you fill in the gaps yourself, he wanted to build something that couldn't die like his children. That, oh, I hope that, that might be going a little too... Because I like burped inside my chest. You should say that again. And I hope you didn't pick that up on the microphone. It probably oh. picked up. We talk about the kidnapping of the children. Yes. But what did they do with the children? We what? see them in the haunted house setting. They're, they're like veal. They're in these little little <laughs> cages. <laughs> Yeah, and but, and we we there is a scene where people come in and choose their correct, steak, but they don't say what they're being sold into. I, right. I thought of it more like a pet store. 
<laughs> it's like a, a villainous pet store where these kids are shoved yeah. into hamster cages. Oh, I hope there's a kid in there. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> there was a fucking kid in there! Oh my god! <laughs> And, and but they never really say what they're for. They're never clear on it. I don't. I don't think they thought it was important. Just ah, bad guys. They, they still chill. So there are Arabs. There are black dudes. There are Jersey people. There you're are... awful focused on race, Jack. Jersey people are not a race. <laughs> and and there there are break dancers and break there dancers. are all these like villainous people around the table. And why are you racist against break dancers? Yeah, what's wrong with break dancers? <laughs> How do they get their bodies to move like that? It's unnatural. <laughs> what are you doing? What is this? A break dance of bad guy? Let's talk about the Black Cougar. Yeah. And Grandpa Geppetto and his science lab and 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 miniature Black Cougars. Oh yeah. And all the great shit that comes with that. There are no action scenes until the very, very end of the movie, and even those aren't particularly great. For a kid's movie, it would have never held the attention of a child. No. <laughs> oh, she can do a cartwheel! Yeah. That's why she was hired. Don't, don't get too close to the wall. What? Oh! What? Oh. what? They tried, they just didn't know how to do it. They got, they got, they got, you know, they know you need to do a spinning kick, yeah. but they don't know how to film the spinning <laughs> kick. Well, I'll, I'll say to that too, Rich, and we had discussed this while watching it, the actor, Eminem or whoever it was, could not see in the mask. Oh, it's the mayor's biggest goon. This guy's got no brains at all. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa's losing it! <laughs> <laughs> he stopped acting, he's just watching the movie. Right. Yeah. Insane or demented? Uh, he's coughing. He's gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> you could tell with some of the choreography, he's just twisting around people or doing something. You could tell he, the actor couldn't see. But they had a lot of great ideas. He got gadgets. Uh, he, he got... He has uh, a car. He has a car with the, the green Fiero headlights, mm -hmm. and that car does nothing. Well, well, that in itself is a whole other unresolved chunk of the movie. Right. Grandpa Geppetto, uh, he creates an android, and you think it's unique to him yeah. because he's a heart heart surgeon slash brain surgeon slash toy maker. Right. But apparently, androids are everywhere, the and nobody tells us why. <laughs> Oh, she's a robot! She's a robot! Yeah. Oh. What? <laughs> so, like, our, our first reveal is a black lady who's at the head of the villain circle. It's just an android for some reason. And that was at the end of the movie, man. That was not till the end, I mean. And then after that, we go, why was she an android? Then an army of androids come to fight our hero. And it's true. Can we assume that the woman with super speed is also an android? Oh, sure. Yeah! Yes! Yeah! Oh, oh, oh my god. god! She ran so fast! What the fuck was that? Because that's never explained in any way, shape, or form. She but... tries to uh, sexually assault the, the prison guard by feeding him laced coffee. And then she tries to smother a, a 11 year old girl. Right. Yes. She's no ball. good. She's no good. I'm hazy on one thing. We discuss the the black woman that gets her arm sliced, and she's an android. That's right at the end of the movie. Right. Who made that android? Yeah, that's the first <laughs> question. <laughs> well, we we we. It wasn't Grandpa. We Stro speculated that it was it. it was one of Grandpa's early androids. Geppetto. <laughs> I'm fucked <laughs> <I'm assuming laughs> That that escaped from his 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 sex den. Uh, a laboratory. Laboratory. He, well, he created something to replace his son. He would have created something to replace his wife he was too. Just about that getting, makes re sense. getting ready to to. F <laughs> and then he's like, oh, oh, that's weird. Let me do this whole Black Pan Panther thing. <laughs> I need you to step into the cylinder. Is this, a <laughs> is this after her? 
The black sex doll left? Oh, and Grandpa before. was kidnapping all the children, too. He was really behind everything. Insane laboratory scientist or sex den scientist I, I, I think or he's, demented? I think he's insane. I, the, the loss of his wife and child drove, drove him, him insane. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. They were all set for the black cougar toy line. They thought this was going to be a thing. This, this movie also you, functions as an advertisement. Really believe that. You believe that this, these filmmakers I, thought this was going to yeah, be. Yeah. I don't think that's a practical thing to believe, but I can believe that the person who made this may be deluded enough to have thought that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Black Cougar superhero for children. Kids from four to seven all over the world will big Black Cougar because he's the only superhero that does what? Pop! Protects children. I think we can all agree on this. They put some effort into it, though. Yes. Some sets are well designed for what? level this is some it's, of the sets are well designed yeah. there's lighting in shots there's a smoke ma they have a smoke machine they use it i could put a lot of effort into building a rocket at the end of the day it would still explode you're, you're giving yourself that much credit that it would even explode and it wouldn't just be like a pile of junk sitting in your driveway <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna fight him. Well, that was worth it. <laughs> he still did not fight him. <laughs> <laughs> but now when you look at the logic of the plot and stuff, why did not Black Panther Cougar Puma carry him in a sack and just drop it? Instead, we get them <laughs> repelling from a ceiling. Because you get the exciting scene where these little dolls are repelling from a helicopter. And they're, they're driving around a... They're driving around like a vent in these little RC cars. Yeah, it's adorable. Don't mess with Mr. Blues. Don't mess with D double O Z. This guy. Uh Salvador Silvio Dis Don't mess with Mr. Blues. Don't mess with D double O Z. De Salvatore. Yeah, gotta be that asshole. Uh the backstory to me is more interesting than the film. Yeah. Black Cougar has one goal, and that goal is to protect children. All right? Black Cougar! He looks like the guy from Spinal Tap, Christopher Guest yeah. from Spinal Tap, or the singer so you're saying of Iron Maiden. People with long hair are freaks. So what I'm gonna do, <laughs> fuck, fuck this. Here's your microphone. There's something wrong with them. People with long hair. That hair gets in the way. Fuck you guys. That's I'm what gonna go get another drink here. That's the set. We tore his movie Skull Forest like a fucking new one, yeah. and 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 ripped on him for like a solid hour, yeah. and yet talking about his hair is what did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what crossed the line. Oh, the end is bizarre. The the montage at the end, it, it's like outtakes, but then we see stuff in the outtakes where it's like, where was this? There's like a demon. Creature? Yes, yes. You see him for a second in the outtakes yeah. at the end. What the hell? But but more so, a then after that, we started looking this guy up because we were so curious about him, and we saw him try to pitch Black Cougar on some mm. sort of Shark Tank-esque show. The Black Cougar is the first superhero to protect children and to wear spanks. <laughs> Woo! Oh my God. England, you... Have to take the cougar across the pond. I'm not going to get on a plane with that. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, bizarre, and and really, it's 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 one of those things where it's just like baffling. There's this guy who has this idea, and it's so terrible. And he thinks he's X Men, or he thinks yes, he's, he thinks okay. he thinks he can make a black like a, a, a new brand new superhero movie and it can be just as popular as a mainstream thing. This guy, I don't know where he got the money from, because clear this was shot on film, yeah. and there's a very large uh, you know, cast and crew okay. and production. Everybody's got an idea here there. How do you raise the money? Go. Bake sale. Okay. Uh, privately financed by himself, because he was like an attorney. I, I think he, he built local businesses and neighborhood associations. So this guy was charismatic enough to rally a whole bunch of people. The whole community, yeah. The whole community to this concept of a superhero that saves children, yeah. and we're gonna have a toy line, we're gonna make $10 million from this idea, and everybody lost their money. 
the the weird thing is that his website is still up uh, blackcougar.com I spent hours on blackcougar.com I, I I'm looking for like the documentary on making yeah. of black cougar and you did not find I, that. I mean like I searched just I need a new credit card it was a guy it was a guy with an idea that was well beyond his grasp black cougar is here how's my eyes how's my hair <laughs> <laughs>
we got to the end of this movie. We got to like like the main villain had just died, and I'm I was like, is this movie ending? Because it felt like we'd only been watching it for like 30 minutes. And that's great pacing. But instead, yeah. we're like we're right at the end. Yeah. You know? So he moved every every minute every of the minute. film where yeah. something new. And if the plot wasn't moving, we'd see boobs and bush. Now we're at a whorehouse. Now we're on a boat. Now we're at a weird, wild sex party on a boat. Now, <laughs> now pirates are invading, and a guy with a Nazi hat is trying to rape a woman who is turned on by weird things. He's trying to rape. And now the boat <laughs> blew up, and we're on an island. And now the island has cannibal monks. Now we're being chased by zombie ninjas. Oh, don't forget the island has prostitutes. <laughs> nudity, <laughs> nudity, nudity, nudity. Yeah. Well, so Rob Forrest's Citizen Kane compared to. I'm so drunk right now. It's the difference between I can an hear exploitation you, you little film shit. <laughs> yeah! Oh, right. That was like blue blood. That was great! Yeah. Except the sword bent Did up. Did you see the bent That's sword? Great, yeah. Great head, though. It, becomes, it becomes a survival picture af after 75% of the movie is over. It's like, oh shit, now we're on this island. Fuck, we gotta get off the island back onto this plane. Yeah. Really, it's those leading up to it. And and there is that that 30 minute long bizarre sex party sequence on the boat. Yeah. But it kept moving. All star sequence though. I got no complaints. It was weird and it kept moving. Can, can we just take a moment to mention the weird bearded baby bartender? <laughs> oh, that guy. Proto hipster? <laughs> Oh. oh my god! Oh. Sure, coming right up. That was an unfortunate looking person. Whoa! <laughs> Not off the carpet! He looks like Bozo, but just just paler. Yeah. It's a wonderful I mean it's not the best like like bad B movie I've it's ever seen. It's not without his problems, right? But it it I mean it's too competent to be like a really Good bad B movie, but it's wonderful to see like a like a like a sloppy 1970s sleazy movie blown up to Blu-ray quality from a film print. When I'm used to watching movies that that are like this on a terrible VHS tape yes. from 1980 something, tracking it's it's great. It's it's glorious, and I don't know who released this. They uh, are good people. Syndrome. They are. syndrome. Yeah. You know it's it's cheesy, but you were never laughing at it. No, no, no! You, you go, you're along for the ride. It's it's great. Oh, oh Zuka! Wait, what did that yeah, do? Yeah, I did no. nothing. <laughs> yeah, just beat him with the bazooka. Good sound effects. Well, with, let's mention the fight scenes in the movie too, because Black Cougar, Black Puma, whatever it was, we're waiting for that action that doesn't really happen. Right. Yeah. Raw Force is not that film. And you would even commented in one of the fight scenes, it felt real. It yes. felt like a slugfest type thing. Like, wow, are the actors getting hurt filming this thing because it's so slugfesty. That's like a real fight. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. This is great. But that scene that I referenced that was really realistic, that was in, it was when Taylor Swift was tied up on the bed. Right. And that, someone, That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. He, he's like, bam, bam. And that's not even the scenes that featured the martial arts guy no. who kind of looks like a little Bruce Lee. Um, I don't know who mini. that is. Mini, mini Bruce Lee, he is... Rex King is who he went as in this film. Okay. He, he is amazing. Yeah. And and all the the martial arts and the the fighting that he does in this is really good. Oh yeah. Yeah, th this movie definitely excels when this guy's on screen. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Good. I'm surprised he's not a known figure. Mm -hmm. It's actually really sad. Like the the whole movie centers around the Burbank Kung Fu Club. And <laughs> while those guys yeah. can kick and punch, they never do anything as exciting as Short Round. Does. I want the t-shirt. There has got to be, like the Dragon <laughs> Sound, which I have, yeah. Yeah. there has got to be Burbank Kung Fu Club. Burbank and I want Kung it. Fu Club. Somebody send I'm it to me. It's on Redbubble, I'm sure. Got to be. 
it's just like 1970 something. Whatever. Everyone's on drugs. They Fuck it. They didn't know to do a character arc. Yet. Yes, exactly. Right. Or or a, a plot arc. Even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but they didn't need to. This happens and this right. happens and this what, happens and the next thing happens. They, they and now it's the over. Setup. Now have... Hitler's dead. Yes. <laughs> you have a great arc where where white guys from Burbank, California, who are in a kung fu club somehow defeat the disgraced undead. Undead. But no, there's but no that arc. never really happens. Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh. The uh, Hitler's sidekick, guy with band-aids on his face, <laughs> is under the false impression that Hitler is selling the Asian <laughs> prostitutes for jade so that they could be raped by the monks. Yes. But he doesn't know that they're literally being barbecued and eaten by the monks. And at I some point, he... he seems to have a change of heart. They're not buying the girls for sex. Then why are they buying them? For food. Are you serious? Yeah, he seems to be uncomfortable with that. And then it's so, and then Hitler says, "I'm gonna up your your 15%. yeah to fifteen percent." And then. Okay. And never again do we hear that. Because they don't do character arcs. They just, things just happen. Set up payoffs. I want another beer. Look out. Whoa! 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 Ah! Ah! We're under attack! <laughs> Run, Trembler! <laughs> You could say in the recent past then, there's been nothing that you've watched like Raw Force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say so, yeah. This movie is moving. That's true. Yeah, it doesn't look at feel. It. This Wait, movie... There's like four minutes left. It's relentless. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about Well, let's talk about the films we watched tonight, and it's time to uh, and it's time to pick best of the worst. Rich Evans, your your pick between Raw Force and, and Black Cougar, because I know you don't like DB Cooper. Yeah. Oh man, I you know I I respect Black Cougar for its creativity and its weird like toy action scenes, but. Raw Force is just too legitimately entertaining. I have to give it to Raw Force. Len, your pick for best of the uh, worst. Th this is a landslide victory for me. Raw Force is, it's not even, this is the biggest landslide <laughs> vote I could ever give on a best of the worst program. It's an obvious answer. I'm just saying, I feel bad for Black Cougar that it's, it's up against Raw Force. Yeah. <laughs> this is manipulation. This this is someone taking advantage of a genre. Okay. Taking okay. advantage of a local right. community force. Raw Force is an exploitation film, but the film is in bold. That, that's a real movie. It keeps moving. Exactly. Yeah. Raw, yeah. Raw Force is the best of the worst. Mike? When you say exploitation film, though, I'm, I'm leaning towards D.B. Cooper versus Bigfoot because <laughs> the... The, the the young men in the film I can't believe this thought they were making a real movie and that all they did was get get a <laughs> no. other than those guys everyone knew what was going on <laughs> but but these two films <laughs> uh, yeah I I have to give it to raw force it's pure it's pure in its sleaze. So at the end of the day, this is sleazy, but at least it's honest. Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely, yes. absolutely. That, yes, raw yes. force wins. <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> okay, we are destroying Bigfoot versus B D Cooper. Yep. J B Cooper. D B. D B Cooper. No. We get. Well, how about we get a male dancer? This is just your own sick little thing. Let's just skip I'm that. I'm not even commenting on yeah. it. Yeah. We, we need a destruction that is not done within the studio. Why don't, why don't we just leave it at a gay dance club? Because then maybe somebody can get some use out of it. Hey everybody, we're on the road today and we're gonna get rid of our copy of D.B. Cooper versus Bigfoot in the manner that Rich suggested during our discussion. 
So we're currently headed to a gay bar in Milwaukee called Dick's, where North meets South. And Rich is gonna go inside and leave the copy of D.B. Cooper versus Bigfoot in the bathroom. Maybe somebody will find it and be like, hey, what's this? I'm gonna watch this. Somebody should get some use on it. That's right, that's right. Um, so we're, we're not gonna destroy the film. We're going to pass it on. Jim, make a left up there. You've been here before? I, I, I've heard of them, they're famous. Yeah, he's right, it's a left. The GPS says left. Okay. I guess uh, here we go, all right? Good luck, Rich. Thank you. Okay, he's in. All right. So he's just leaving it in the bathroom, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just running it in, shouldn't be too long. A lot of motorcycles today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here he comes. Oh, finally. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Woo! <sighs> okay, put it in the bathroom. Right out of the blue with his creator and his team to see him through. He's the SIL. 